Good morning, everybody. I'm K. Visalini, 19 years old, five world records holder from India. Life is a one-time offer. Life is so beautiful, but it always depends on how you perceive it. You can classify people around you into three main categories. One, those who accept anything that happens to them, either positive or negative, as it is. Two, if something negative happens to them, they change into positive. And if something positive happens to them, they change into negative. These are the only three categories of people. Thomas Alva Edison. A popular story about him states that Edison, while he was in school, his teachers wrote a letter to his parents that this boy is not suitable to study in any school in anywhere in the world. But today, due to the immense effort by his mother and himself, his tons of inventions had earned him thousands of patents and now no student in anywhere in the world could cross his school life without studying about Edison. This is an example of converting negative into positive. Abhinav Bindra, this man with vision disorder, had chosen rifle shooting as his career and passion. In 2008 Beijing Olympics, he won gold medal for India and he became the first one in, from India to earn gold medal in an individual category. When the Indian flag was soaring high and the national anthem was playing in the background, Mr. Bindra bowed down to receive the medal. And at that moment, every one of us would have felt like we ourselves have earned that medal. This is also an example of converting negative into positive in life. But the expert in anything was once a beginner. Let's define life. What is life? It is nothing about finding oneself. It is about creating, sculpting, and just molding oneself. Life is not about just living in this world. It is a great opportunity to create a, an impression that we have been in this world. Once in an interview, Mr. Bill Gates was asked about a question like, why does Microsoft hire too many Indians? Because almost 34% of Microsoft employees are Indians. And Mr. Gates, with a grin, replied that if I had not hired Indians in Microsoft, Indians would have made their own Microsoft out there in India. Our potential is well, very well aware to outsiders, but we should understand that. I had met our former president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam sir, twice in my life. Once when I was three years old and again when I was 14 years old. He just advised me one thing. Visalini, you are an Indian child born to an Indian mother and an Indian father. Learn anything from the world. But all that God has bestowed upon you should be utilized only for the welfare of the Indian nation. I felt his advice very surprising. Like, why did he say so? But later I understood the real meaning behind it. I started writing and appearing for uh, international certification examinations in computer science domain from an age of 10. And in that course, I had, comp I had broken the records of two Pakistani students who so far hold only one international certification each. These international certification examinations are written by students only after B.Tech and M.Tech. But I started doing them in my 10 years and broken their records. And now I stand proud as an Indian girl with 13 international certifications. And that is the time I felt I kept the word of Dr. Kalam for the first time. For the first time in Indian history, a 15 years old was invited by Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, to deliver a technical lecture to 700 plus ISRO scientists. That was me. I had delivered two hours technical lecture and that lecture 
received huge applause, standing ovation, and the Mangalyaan satellite sent to Mars by ISRO, which is the most prestigious memento in the whole Indian country. And this is the second time I felt I kept the word of Dr. Kalam. To me, being an Indian is not just my identity, it is my passion. We in India, almost 65% of the population has the age of less than 35 years. So we have the world's largest young workforce. Name any technological or strategic development today. Uh, you can...
way you have lived. And turning back the pages reveals the life history. And I would say we should discard all the frivolous moments and keep only what needs to be cherished. And of course, we have such a great inbuilt power for forgetting some stuff and this is how we should use it. Goal setting. I've heard a great saying that aim for the star so that you can at least hit a fruit. It makes me to ask a question, what do you want to hit? Is it a star or a fruit? It is such a ridiculous principle because you should not follow it and you should be self-aware of what do you want to do. Do what you aim and aim what you can do. Even the legendary example from Mahabharata states the same thing. Arjuna's target. Arjuna wanted to hit the bird's eye. He aimed for it and he went it. But he did not confuse it. I aim for something and I hit this. That clarity is called goal setting. And if you ask about my goal, in India, there is still some space left for a woman born in India, working in the scientific domain, who earns the country back a Nobel Prize. And that is what I consider as my lifetime goal. There is a tiny cavity between people who are considered unsuccessful and what they want to achieve. It is called they quit it. They easily get demotivated. But successful people, if you see, keep on moving. They make mistakes, but they never ever quit. They learn from their mistakes. Achievers are the people who do not find themselves. There's nothing to find about oneself. But achievers take the path of creating themselves by breaking the barriers. And this whole process is called history. Let me ask you a question, what is impossible? I have been told that coming out of mother's womb and getting back inside is impossible. But in 2016, that was proved possible. Lin Lee Boomer. Actually, when Lin Lee, baby Lin Lee, was inside her mother's womb, when Margaret Boomer, her mother, was pregnant, it was found that the fetus had developed a tailbone it was found that the fetus had developed a tailbone tumor. The tumor started sucking the blood from the fetus and further it grew bigger than the baby itself. Doctors had planned for a critical surgery of only 20 minutes time. The uterus of the mother was cut open. The baby along with the tumor was taken out and within 20 minutes it was removed and the baby was put back inside the uterus. It was sewed back and the baby went inside the womb. And 12 weeks later, the surgery, the baby was born for the second time. It entered the world officially. And now it must be some four to five years old, doing all the stuff that the people at the same age do. Therefore, even coming out of mother's womb and going back inside is proven possible. It is always easy to recuperate from failure. Yeah, it's very easy. Just three steps for it. Face the failure, enjoy the difficulties, and feel the difference. Why should we, one's own analytical critique, doing wise comparisons. See, one, every single person is as unique as his own fingerprint. Then how can one compare himself with someone else out in the world. There is no general unit or metric to measure every people. Everyone is unique. Therefore, one can always wisely compare himself, his today, with his past. And always feel composed. Even if you have achieved your birth motive or even if you have failed in the most simplest thing ever in the world, just feel composed. Because a seed, even a seed needs to fall down and bury itself inside the soil for years to grow into a large tree. A butterfly has to force itself in the pupa stage to surf the sky with its wings. You can notice here, growth happens in silence. 
The silence can take anyone to greater heights. What can stop you? Is that other people? Is that obstacles? Never. It's you yourself halting yourself from getting exposed to pain. Yes, I really agree with the point that failure brings pain. But there are two types of pains. One, that hurts a person. And second, that changes the person. Just discard all the hurtings. Just remember what you have changed. Have you ever wondered how life would be if it is totally painless? There is a disorder called CIP, congenital insensitivity to pain. And people with CIP say that pain is precious. We should learn to handle pain and to endure pain. That's it. What's the difference between learning and studying? Just, uh, do you learn to ride a bicycle or you study for it? Or you go for an exam, you just study for an exam or you learn for it? Study. It happens. Because if you had not touched a bicycle for about 10 years, you can generally ride it easily. But it never happens with your examination. What's the secret ingredient? It is the passion, interest and quest to learn something which is absent in studying stuff. When you start learning, you turn on a no failure mode. You just learn new lessons to halt yourself from pe previous failures. But you get new failures that gets you new lessons. Just stay positive about that. There are five success keys. Time management, determination, self-confidence, positive thinking, and smart work. Don't toil hard. Just go for the opportunities smartly. Use them wisely. Opportunities do not knock your door twice. But nowadays, they do not call, knock your door even once. Therefore, no, don't miss any opportunity. Use them wisely, but never ever misuse your opportunities. And if you feel in any part of your life that you do not get an opportunity, you do not get the chance you deserve, then life has given you a great chance to create your opportunity yourself. Always stay positive and calm. Keep on breaking the boundaries and the stereotypes that keep you away from your success and what you want to achieve. I would like to say that I would like to say that we all have arrived on this earth with a return ticket. All we do not know is the date, the time, and the location of departure. But we definitely have a very confirmed ticket. Our seat is confirmed. So guys, life is a limited period offer. Use it well. And to do that, you need to be a warrior and not a warrior. Time has no holiday. Dream has no expiry date and life has no pause button. And therefore, <coughs> life is like a coin. You can spend it any way you wish, but you can spend it only once. Life gives you opportunities to learn so many things. It starts from mathematics to science to computers, from business management to geography, from arts to anything. But it depends on one's own wish, what one wants for. But we all have a common question. Which category do we like to be? Do we want to keep studying history or make historical achievements? 